Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Gap Down Backer Podcast. Um, Coach Jerry, how you doing? I'm great, man. I'm, I'm a little upset. Uh, I'm missing the Army Navy game. That's the best part about 21st, 21st century is I can hit the record button, watch it later. So uh, I, I'd rather be talking about football than watch it anyways. I can always go back and run. So I'm great. How are you today? I'm doing good. I mean, we got. I mean. I'm glad the Army, I mean, by, we'll, we'll, by the time we're done with recording today, we'll be, at least probably be able to see the second half, which is what I want to look, watch. Um, it kind of sucks there's no Ohio State-Michigan game. Um, Man, I was devastated all week. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that is a, a highlight. No, no matter what side you're on, it, it's, I mean, big rivalry games getting canceled like that just suck. And um, so, it's kind of such an ironic history, too. I mean, I, a lot of people kind of really don't understand the aspect of it. Is uh, it, it was basically Toledo is the reason why Ohio State Michigan rivalries even existed. Yeah, and I think a lot of people think it's some worthless rivalry, but it's a way of life here in Ohio and Michigan. Oh yeah, all over Toledo, which I've been to Toledo. It's all right. It's not the. It's not something you're going to war over. Let's just be a, like yeah. And had the greatest, one of the greatest rivalries in sports yeah. over the city of Toledo, man. It's bonkers. Yeah, it's just, it, it's interesting. And it's got a lot of tie into it with um, just like prior head coaches working at each other's universities. You got prior head coaches who were born in Toledo. So that kind of builds into the, the, the atmosphere. Um, some coaches really buy into the rivalry, i.e., Jim Tressel. That was the first thing he talked about when he took the Ohio State job. Um, that basketball game, most yeah. infamous. It, I mean, it was really kind of changed the whole landscape of the rivalry. I, I always thought yeah. the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry was interesting because it's other since other than the – I forget what it's called. That's how bad of an Ohio State fan I am and young. But when uh, Bo Slimbecker and Woody Hayes went after it, you know, I think that's the only time in the history of the rivalry where it wasn't so one-sided. Yeah, you know what I mean. Where people, where it was, you didn't know who was gonna win every year because kind of ever since then, you know, I mean, going back to recent history, you had John Cooper got ran out of Ohio State because he didn't take it serious. Earl, Bru- Earl Bruce kind of had win Jim the Trestle, game. Lloyd Carr, yeah. kind of went out of early in the career, and you know, Jim Trestle kind of uh, had some great battles, uh, tight games, and then uh, they kind of moved on to Rich Rod and Ohio. Really, in my lifetime, I don't. I think I've had. Ohio witnessed three Ohio State losses yeah. to Michigan, and one of them was a vacate, and the other one was on a six and seven team. Just the obsession it is, but it's never been. Yeah. It blows me away. It's never been each year. You don't know who's going to win, and and I think that's kind of the history of it. You know, at the beginning of Michigan and Ohio State, it was Michigan just hammered Ohio State, and then had a really good war over ten years with. Woody and Bo, and then after that, it's kind of been random teams just dominate a yeah. certain era, and I really just am not looking forward to the time Ohio State gets dominated again. Hopefully, it never happens. Well, well, well I mean, we'll see. I mean, things happen, and like I said, yeah. it's an interesting rivalry, and um, unfortunately, there's no game this year. Um, and at the same time, for people who are watching this and not just listening to this, we've kind of upped the graphics a little bit. This is the first installment of Upping Graphics. Um, this is obviously be re- being pre-recorded before Christmas break, so by the time you listen, this is probably late January. Um, so we'll probably up it more. I'll work on some stuff during uh, actual Christmas break to up it even more. Uh, kind of what we got today is some huddle drawings. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, be- variations of belly pass. Um, and then the kind of the next solo episode between me and Coach Derry, I think the really only belly thing we have left mm-hmm. off the top of my head is... Belly option, because yep, yeah, and just kind of yeah, different ways to uh, hit the on the outside without uh, well, with deception. I mean, not everyone's yeah. blessed with the ability to yeah. run run jet effectively or quick pitch rockets. So, um, these are just interesting ways to help hit the flank. And I, I know a lot of people don't run it, but it's hard to get information out about belly option. I remember. I, my first year, we ran it at tip. It was kind of hard to find film of it or see clinics of belly options. So just yeah. being a positive outsource of belly option and hopefully getting people to get conversations about it because I don't know a lot about it. No. Uh, I'd love to hear people kind of chime in and talk about it and 
get their thoughts on it too. So. So, yeah, so we'll talk about that kind of next time. It's just me and Coach Deary. I mean, we'll have another guest, at least one or two other guests in between this and the next solo episode of us. But like I said, today we're going to talk some belly pass options. And uh, we're going to start with belly dart. Um, I'm, we're not going to super get into the blocking scheme um, in terms of line. Um, it, a lot of it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of mirror what you do in the run game. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so, I mean, it, I view we draw up uh, the X block. You know, that's when you got to be in a C gap player. Um, if you run belly and you got to be in a C gap player, you're going to X block it almost always. Um, yeah. Now, I forgot that um, belly dart kind of hits so fast um, off jet motion. Yeah. Um, this is where uh, I, I ran it a lot up with uh, Coach Jordo, bad clee pads, and how about tip is uh, we ran jet so well that and, and belly so well that this was just a big hitter for us. Uh, I'm talking. 15, 20, or just simple pass. No, quarterback did a half roll out um, and just hit the flat. So, uh, obviously, you have the X here on an alert player. You know, so if the corner, yeah. if the corner and safety, they're playing too high and the corner sitting on the flat and the safety chasing uh, the, the jet motion and filling the alley, you have your alert player at the X. But for the most part, uh, you get one high, thank gosh, in the uh, triple option. I mean, uh, win T. And, you know, you got wide open flanks with using hardly anyone sitting in the flats oh. um, on both sides. So yeah. that the best part about these plays, we did it all weak side, yeah. but you can run this to the tight side. Um, really belly dark for us is we've got to find out when they're one high, who's not covering the flats. Yeah. Um, and if it's a 4-4 team, we'll run it either way because the, your apex players and outside linebackers slow. We're just going to hit it to the flat, get our best athletes the ball in space and, Yo, I just can't believe I said that. It sounded like a spread coach, but that was the philosophy behind belly dart for us. Well, well, the other thing with, with that is, like, especially when you're seeing those four four teams, they're essentially six twos against you. So there's really, I mean, they're not they're they're if they're in the flats at all, like say for like waggle or something, they're not there for belly. I mean, yeah, well, it's so hard because this guy's running full speed, right? Yeah, like he's running jet motion, and he knows he's getting the ball, so it's not like he's gonna kind of halfway do this motion he's gonna want to get out there and catch the ball so yeah. i mean you got this i mean this if there's an apex player out here you know he's maybe reading the wind you see motion and, and really you're conflicting this guy the whole game you know because this guy's coming out running jet if you run belly well enough he's gonna try to dip inside and help on belly i mean this is yeah a huge conflict of of interest right here and this guy really struggling he's got to cover the best athlete in space be a force player but also string up Jet. I mean, it's a tough job, and he, he's got a hard job. And you know, four fourteen, we just absolutely had a heyday with it. Um, when we ran fifty against fifty teams, um, when we get that into the next slide, uh, we needed help blocking the, the outside man a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we just had a different variation of it. But um, this was the best way we hit the flank on belly pass um, in the spread team. And the best part about it was it mirrored our entire run game. You know, we jet was our base play, so we got jet motion. Belly was our pretty much our second base play off jet motion. Yeah. So uh, right here we got the blocking. You know, right here it symbolizes hey, this just everything looks like either belly or jet. And now on the back end is you got the eyes messed up. You know, four four, they're all looking at motion. You know, so that gets them thinking, especially the secondary too. The corner, everything. So then the linebackers all kind of bite on the belly action. Yeah. And it's four four guys gonna come up here, and then now you hit the flat. Everything looked the same. That's the most important part when you talk about any play action game, much less belly pass. And that's why I can't wait to really dive into some of these plays. Oh yeah, that and the great the great thing is especially on this is, I mean, if you have a smart ex who understands, you don't even have to be super smart, but just understands football well enough. Obviously, 99% of the time, he will never get thrown the ball, ever. Um, at least on this version of it. But he needs to understand, okay, I have a tight corner. Some some teams will press if they just think the little man up and try to not do it. All right, I'm going to run him off. I got somebody off. I'm going to try to push him off vertically. When he starts coming up, I'm going to block him. And then that, that helps. That, that, that X block helps it pop so well. Well, and you guys did it. That's the first time I've ever seen it. We always just told him to be an alert player. But it can turn out to be kind of like a screenplay. Yeah. Right? You know, it, especially if you're getting off coverage, uh, cover three, you know, he's sitting at seven or eight yards. 
You know, he can he can push vertical at five yards full speed, break down or sit, chop his feet, and now it becomes a screenplay where you can't really engage in it because this ball thrown past the line of scrimmage. But now you kind of just set up a screenplay, and that uh, I, I saw it hit a lot of times for us. Yeah. Um, and you guys did that for every belly pass, essentially. If yeah. he was pressed, but he Bush, turned it into option route. Yeah. Uh, Bush did a really good job for us with that. Kind of a screenplay, which was pretty yeah. sweet looking. Well, that's how we treated it. And like I said, Bush did a fantastic job for us that this year. He understood that well, and I think it helps that he's a basketball kid. So he understood yes. a lot of that in terms of movement and when people move and how to adjust to it. And like I said, that's that's all on him. I, well, I, and also, too, because you got that Kenny Simpson uh, came on to a, a podcast earlier. He talked about to a um, I, don't, I don't know if it was off the record or on the record, but he, the one thing he said to us said, we got some of the best wide receivers that run the best brother oh, yeah. routes. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's really all it is is a brother route. You might, if the defense just really messed up, uh, like I said, I was talking to a, another coach that we played this year. I said, you're the first time I've ever seen Flood get hit on the go route. I said, that, that, that might be the first time I've ever seen it. At any level, yeah. and he laughed, and I said, well, "That's what a good brother route is." But you know, knowing that you're not going to get the ball, but you got to sell out. Uh, man, I thought our kids did a fantastic job, and um, I think really split ends in the wing tee are the most special kids on the team because you don't get the ball a lot, and you're asked to do a lot for us. That yeah. goes unnoticed, but that's part about the position is is when you do get the ball thrown to you, it's probably a touchdown. One hundred percent. So. How about we move into the next variation? I think yeah. we've kind of hit Belly so, Dart pretty good. So we good. managed to get 50 teams. Belly Dart, we would still run it. Um, and the one thing that we did this, uh, we, we did uh, at Pitt is each week we would go in on Monday and really kind of depend on the, the players. Um, we played, uh, I'll, I'll never forget, we played Northmont, 4-4 four, four team. We didn't like Belly Pass because they had a four-star outside linebacker. He's at Iowa now. So um, we would tell our kids on Monday, we had two variations of belly pass. And this was one variation. We called it belly pass. The other one was belly dart. So, hey, this week, uh, belly pass this week is going to be, you know, one of those two things. And so we were a hurry up on the line team a lot too. So if they heard the hurry up call belly pass, it was whatever we said on Monday what it was going to be. Yeah. Um, this one's just slightly different. Rip motion. Um, this wing back is running full speed. Fake and jet. Once he gets to the A gap, he slows down, and the wing is going to block one one thousand, two one thousand, and release out to the flats. And the the jet motion wing is just going to take over the block. Um, play side blocking the same. A gap player on call. B gap player. Uh, B gap player. Uh, obviously, we call it Xavier X block it. Or if it's a a, a solid four and an outside back on the wing. Um, we, we just kind of do a fan block, um, and fullback, obviously, good belly fake, pick up anything, any kind of blitzing linebacker. Um, this was a more full rollout. We, we talk about belly dart. We go back. He, uh, the quarterback kind of did a half roll. It was wide open, and you couldn't roll out very much because he got out here quick. There wasn't much time to roll out. You want to throw this ball before he gets to the numbers. Yeah. Get to the numbers, turn and run. This it takes a lot longer to develop because you know you you got to ride the belly fake here, and then you really got to get a good rollout and let the wing get open. Uh, and it kind of had a little waggle concept to it, um, since it was a slow development. The the Y really got time. We we got him five yards vertically and then kind of worked the ten up to here, and it was high, low, and we kind of took the same read. I never saw the backside get thrown here, but it, it did add an element to uh, the, the safety's eyes, because the safeties, if the apex player really, and this 50 team really struggled with not having a flat defender. Um, so again, if we ran this away from the uh, the X, the Y would run a 10-yard corner, the wing would run, and then we just kind of, the wing would run jet motion, and we would just release out to the flat. So we still high-load it. Um, and then the X um, if we figured out they weren't doing a flat prayer, we would condense them a little bit and he'd run that 10 yard drag. Okay. Um, but either way, th this allowed us to determine a 50 team, one side of the field is not playing if they're one high, the flats. Because these inside backers are playing a, 
what I call a 30, a 30, either a 30 alignment or a 20 alignment. It's just head up or outside shoulder at the guard. And if, if that guy's in charge of the flats, good luck. So, uh, I, so really, when they're one high, find out if they're rolling to the split end or the X and uh, or the split end or the Y. And you got to figure out from there. But that was uh, one variation we did it. Um, and this was very effective. But it's just a little bit slower developing. Um, we also had a double team here if it was an X block, that this X block would kind of do a more of a loop, kind of like waggle and help seal the end. Because again, you, you look at in this play, the ball coming out quick. We want to, we, we really want to emphasize belly. But again, this it's a faster development play. This one's slower. And now you're taking your time out here. And the quarterback's trying to get a little bit more of a roll. So we're trying to make sure we really seal the edge defender so we can hit the flank and uh, get a good clear clean pocket to throw it to. Um, when we get to the next pass here, um, we did this a lot this year. Um, this, and Banster can speak on it more, uh, Bellbrook did this to us a ton. Um, th this was more for buck sweep teams that love getting under this single wing type concept here. Um, and this was an adjustment I had to go against is uh, I did a really good job stopping buck. So what did, what did they do? They motioned to the other side and they ran belly pass and ran belly. And they did a lot of different variations of it. Uh, you know, this is a kind of belly slant, kind of a slant arrow concept off belly pass. Um, again, this is, I, I played too high because uh, I was really good at taking base plays away with my front and teaching it. This kind of rode the corner and hit the flats here pretty good. Um, then they ran a post wheel concept out of this, but then you also had your brother out too. So, yeah, uh, this was the absolute B word to defend. Um, but the big problem is here is you got to X block this almost always and, uh, trust the center to go one-on-one -on -one with him and have this guard put the B gap player or come down to the A gap player and get a double team because this guard had to really loop around here and get the edge defender because so you can roll out a little bit. Um, you know, and, and you set the pocket. If it's a belly slant arrow concept, you know, the quarterback can plant and throw either one if he's got a good enough arm that you yeah. can kick out. But anytime they rolled out, um, you got to have make sure this guard is in good position. Um, to throw. I mean, we ran this every once in a while up at, when I was at Pitt, but we didn't get in this formation a ton. Um, now, we I, had a lot of no mo belly out of this, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get. I'll get into what we did to, uh, out of this more the next slide. Um, but this is probably one of the best variations of belly pass I've ever had. The hardest I've ever had to defend, um, mainly because you know the motion, this kind of motion, slide motion, and I always go back to John Gruden. Is uh, this wing back kicked out a lot? And they ran belly. They would kick out an outside linebacker. So this play looked like what John Gruden would call uh, spider white two banana. And it makes it look like they got power to the weak side. And this fullback, the, the whole point was to kick the flat. This is a little different variation. Instead of the fullback kicking out and releasing, it's the wing back making it look like he's going to kick out and release. You know, obviously, this is your alert player. And you, you're really trying to throw the ball to the flats. Get them out in space and let, and let the home dog go to work here, man. These are your best athletes. Uh, Bellbrook always puts this guy their best blocker. Yeah. So his reward is, you know, getting a wide open pass and running it for 15 yards. Um, again, Belly, he's got to clean up. The fullback's got to clean up any blitzing linebacker. Um, and the win back, he kind of get a double action here. Um, absolute incredible play for Bellbrook. Um, again, because, you know, you start getting, and there's constraint plays off of it, when he runs an out and up, and they scored a touchdown on a third and four against us, my first year being a coordinator, and because you're challenging this flat player to come and then turn and run with him. You know, he's got to be a force player. He's got to be an alley player. He's got to get in the window. And then if you run an out and up, he's got to run up with him. Um, and obviously it just didn't happen because I don't spend a whole lot of time against Passing plays 
to bend the wing tees. So this is another phenomenal variation of it. Um, Banter, do you have anything you want to add? Well, you guys I, get this I love, I, a lot and belly pass. One, I love what this I formation. Two, I love doing it out of slide motion. I, I, we did some of this this year. Um, I think especially when you run how many variations of belly we do uh, with motioning and mm-hmm. formationally, like this is where this becomes deadly. And then also yep. for the teams that run buck sweep well, like we didn't run buck sweep. We run other kind of similar plays buck sweep, kind of like cheaper versions. But stuff like this is great because especially those lot. Again, we're trying to beat 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids. When kids see stuff like this over and over again, they're assuming it's belly. They're assuming it's what we call blast and power and stuff like that because of the motion. They're not so they're already lost there. Once you include the uh, play action to the fullback and then the drop back or the slight rollout, depending on how you teach it, I mean it's usually wide open money. And hell, even that slant behind him is wide, usually wide open because the linebackers have bitten up so much from everything that it's just golden. So that, that's really all I got on that. I think I said I think I think I think the slower slide motion, especially against odd front teams, give you another little variation and another eye candy that can cause this to be explosive. Sure. If you would you tag um, if the slant was open. And the quarterbacks, you know, oftentimes, you know, you, you preach it, hit the flat, hit the flat, hit the flat because it's open. But if the slant is open, is that something you you guys would go and tag and say, hey, or, would you just tell the quarterback throw the slant or would you just say? We, we, we depend on the quarterback. Like, like unfortunately, we've had essentially two first-year quarterbacks in a row because of system-wise. Um, mm-hmm. That first year, you'll probably going to tag it. Maybe towards the end of the year, they're going to read it. Um, the longer they're in the system, the kind of the more leeway you can give it with them. Um, sure. And, like, they understand, okay, this is going to cause him to move, which could give me their read there. Um, so it kind of just varies on your quarterback and who it is. Most of the time I'd probably tag it or say, especially if, say if you do this, come in to start a drive or just out of a timeout, I, you could tell them, look the slant first, and if mm-hmm. it's there, throw it. If not, hit it now. But you, again, sure. you can't. You can't have it. You, you can't. If you're going to throw a slant, you're going to throw a slant because you can't take. You can't be too late throwing the yep. arrow route. Otherwise, it, it's going to be too late, and he's going to be catching it too close to the sideline. You're going to gain two yards. Yeah, and, and really, I mean that. I mean, if you only gain two yards on a pass play, then you might as well just run the ball. But you know, so I, I kind of agree. Um, and then, kind of, the really, the, the last variation I want to do. Um, if you're a no mo belly team. Again, we talked about it earlier. When we, we talk about, and this is one of my favorite all-time plays I've ever seen, man. This was a, as good as a second and long play I've ever seen or in any kind of scenario. Um, we know Mo Belly a lot, especially out of this single wing formation. Um, and, and the one thing that we did, um, we wanted to say, okay, you know, if we know Mo Belly, I, mean, th- I talked about this in our Belly Sweep podcast here, if there's no mo belly, we run belly sweep action behind it. You know that way you still get a you're still conflicting guys. If we no mo belly pass, we kept running into problems with um, a lot of people not being um, a lot of people not being conflicted and among other things. And so what we did was we decided that hey, why not have a belly, be, when you just had a belly boot, and it's very similar concept. Um, this Y block one one thousand, two one thousand, releases out to the flats, and then the uh, wing on the ten yard corner, and it's the same concept, high low. Uh, the wing here is an alert player. Um, I've seen this hit for a touchdown, um, and, and we have film of this. Um, yeah. I really don't have a ton of access to uh, Tips Huddle anymore for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, I get you in contact with uh, Joel Derg. Um, I'm sure he has all this stuff saved up in a file somewhere, cut-ups of it. Um, this was a money play um, because cause really, you, any way you look at it, you're playing uh, cover three, you're still reading two to one, two blocking, one releases two to vertical, you have to flap. If you're reading Ohio, Ohio, He's blocking, one pushes vertical, 
the corner is going to try to sit on this, and this is wide open because this is a very slow developing play, um, and we just boot it. Everything looked the same from the action. Linebackers flow, linebackers flow. Seal the edge for a second. Quarterback's got to get good depth here, um, almost at 10 yards. We caught 8 to 10, attack downhill. And if this is open throat, if not, this is always wide open. And this was a phenomenal variation we have of it. Um, and it's, it's a good way to run belly pass off no mo action. Um, so that way you always have this in your arsenal. And uh, boot is one of my favorite concepts to defend. Um, and, and I'm sure you, you can run this with motion. I wouldn't recommend you, you don't want a one person out ever. Um, you want something that's always conflicting. But, you know, Really, this was a good play for us, and uh, I kind of want to review before we head out here. Um, so you got belly dart here. This is kind of a jet motion, get out quick, um, half roll, everything's zoned. Um, you know, there are some ways you can get uh, the tight end involved in this uh, certain belly pass. If you go uh, to episode 10, um, we, we had a really good uh, video clips of the Y running straight at the safety on almost every belly play. And eventually that uh, stuff hit for a touchdown because the safety just look at it as the boy who cried wolf. I really would recommend looking into that um, a lot more um, if you're trying to utilize a tight end and belly pass. Um, but again, sell the belly pass, sell the belly fakes, make it look like it's real. Okay. Same thing for here. If you're having problems blocking this overhang guy or uh, a 50 team, you know, it helps you set the edge here a little bit. Same concept, um, belly pass with the slide motion. Um, and again, you can tag the Y to do whatever. Um, I, I really like the sprinting thing out. And I, I'll probably add that to my future play, but uh, I thought that was about as good as I've ever seen. That's talked about episode 10 um, and, and then belly boot. Uh, I think these are all great variations and probably one of the most unstoppable plays if you get really effective at running belly. Yeah, um, and dictate when you want to throw the ball. Not throw them because you have to because it's third and ten. But if you can do this on a first and ten and get off script, boy, oh, boy, is it explosive and it's fun. So I'll let you finish up with whatever you got, Banstra. But that's kind of belly pass in a nutshell for me. No, I, I mean, I, I I think it's a, a great series of plays. I think the belly dart especially is essentially a screen. Um, our head coach talks to about it all the time. Just run belly dart. It's always open. It's always there. Like, you will always gain yards. He's always about that because people will bite in on that. Whether you're running jet well or whether you run belly well, somebody will bite in on it. Um, I like belly boot. It's a good, easy, high, low read for a quarterback. Um, and like I said, it's, it's all, and it's all cheap, easy pass concepts. There's nothing extravagant there, and it's most high school quarterbacks can complete most of these. Like, it's not anything overly... <laughs> It allowed you to be creative, right? Yeah. I mean, you really can be so creative with this, man. And I, and I love that aspect of it. Because you can fit it however you fit this. Like this belly boot play, yeah. we came up with three three or four years into when I was coaching. Uh, to go against Troy with a big game for us. And we wanted we put a new play action concept they hadn't seen before. But we're like, it fit well. It mirrored what we did. That's the beauty of belly pass. You can run whatever route concepts you want and Variation as long as it mirrors you run game, um, man, and that's what I liked about belly pass to motion. It's just especially, I think belly the consensus is almost everyone runs it, yeah, in a the offense, and it allowed you to be really super creative with it. Well, coaches, I mean, that was another episode of the Get Down Backer podcast. Um, we got Steph Store, um. Next episode, he's going to talk a variety of things, from, and he's from Louisiana. Um, and then following that is a very special episode. Um, we will have Jim McKee from Kentucky, um, state champion, um, excellent wing T coach, probably one of the best wing pro, – he's, pro, he's probably the go-to wing coach in the Midwest. Um, so we'll, we'll have Jim on, um, Coach McKee, to talk uh, kind of like practice and how he installs throughout the week. He's got some good stuff. He's got some stuff ready for us. Uh, so those are kind of previewing the next two episodes. Um, and, again, if you need to reach out to me or Coach Deary, our information is in the bio. Um, and um, look forward to seeing you next time.